We were, we were in service last week when that happened. Yeah, we were all having worship. We were, um, I think, as a matter of fact, um, we went through both our worship experiences. And um, you've all seen the news. It's been, it's kind of taken over culture. It's been the thing that's been going on. And um, I think I was right in the back. Uh, we were on our way out the door. And I think it was Marcia stepped out of the count room and said to Eddie, did you hear that Kobe died? And Eddie says to her, quit playing, right? And then uh, he comes to me and he says, hey, Kobe died. And I said, Eddie, the same thing, quit playing, right? Quit, quit joking because uh, everybody knows I'm a Kobe fan, right? Everybody knows that. That's my dude, right? I, I, Kobe's made millions of sermon illustrations for me, right? <laughs> you kind of get the deal. I'm, I'm the Kobe guy. But I was shocked, right? And I think the culture was shocked because here's what we were saying, not Kobe, Right? We were saying, too young, um, life is ahead of him, and I want to use that as an illustration to talk about what I'm going to talk today, because it seems for a lot of us in our head, we have a presupposition on who should die and who should not die. <laughs> right? Because we take life for granted. We take life for granted. And we, 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 we act as if we know who should go next and who should not go next. So this is why I want to say to us this morning, we've got to learn to make the best of this life because tomorrow is not promised. It's not promised. It's not promised. And I don't want to make this, this sermon is not about Kobe because Eddie was saying to me in my preparation this week, so you're preaching about Kobe this week? He said, no, I'm not preaching about Kobe. I want to preach about preparing for death. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about preparing for death because as we live life, we don't think we could ever be next. <laughs> Come on, y'all. We don't think that. Look at what Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and then I'm going to walk through the simple things. I just want to have a conversation with us this morning so we can hear. Um, Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, For everything there is a season and a time for every manner or activity under heaven. I'm in the ESV. Verse 2, he says, A time to born, to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. It says you're a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. So back up to verse 2. This is the part that I want to spend. A time to be born and a time to die. And with what we encountered as a country, as a nation um, this past week, uh, we will say it wasn't time for him to die. And I'll raise the question, who are we? The same is true when Michael Jackson passed. The same is true when Prince passed. Right? Whitney Houston, come on. Can, I can go on and on. Here's what we said. That was too soon. Here's what I'm saying this morning. Who calls the shot? <laughs> who calls the shot? Point to yourself. Who calls the shot? When it's your time, who calls the shot when it's my time? You get it? The kohole or the preacher or the writer of Ecclesiastes simply says, there's a time when you enter the earth, just like we don't dictate when we came in. <laughs> we don't dictate when we leave. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we don't understand that, and sometimes we take for granted who we are and where we are. So I want this thought to get in your spirit as we kind of go through this. Make the best of this life by living in a manner that is pleasing to God. 
If I'm going to make the best of this life, I can't think about this life. <clears throat> Pastor Lionel in our time this morning says part of what he's going to do as his fast and his time is he's going to start to go to the end and then work from the end forward. Let me tell you what that means. If you want to put perspective to that and we look about what we're saying, make the best of this life by living in a manner pleasing to God. I ought to live life on earth as if I'm already in heaven. <laughs> that changes my language. It changes my interactions. It changes everything that I do on earth such that it is pleasing to God. If I don't see heaven as my home, I live life on earth as if I'm a son of the enemy. And I'm using the term son in a neutral gender sense. You kind of get where I'm going, right? So be cognizant of that. So go with me. Go over to chapter 9. I just want these scriptures to speak to us this morning to hopefully um, understand a little more of, of what God is saying. So two simple things that I want to share with you this morning. And the first thing I want us to understand as we look at this text and read us this, at these text verses that are in front of us. And I'm just going to let them speak to you. And I'm going to encourage you in your time of prayer to allow them to speak uh, to you in whatever translation you may use. But I want you to understand that life is uncertain, but death is sure. Come on. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, the, the reason the funeral business is so popular, death is guaranteed is one for every person. <laughs> really. I, I want you to hear me say that. It's one for every person. And, and the intent for today is not just to scare anybody, so don't, 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 don't feel that way. It's just to help us to put into perspective as we live life. So for some simple things as it, relates, as, as it relates to that, I want us to know this morning that God is the only one who knows our destiny, right? We don't know that. God is the only one that knows that. And because he's the only one that knows that, we are all subject to death, right? And we're all subject to death. And in all cases, if I had my choice on whether I want to live or whether I want to die, I'm going to choose life every single time. Talk to me, y'all, right? But then we have to remember what we do during life should prepare us for life that's going to happen after death. Yeah, and we miss that. And we forget that a lot of time. And, and the, the important thing with item D here is that no one knows the day or the hour of their departure. None of us, none of us know this. None of us can prepare. So let's read as we talk about those four things. I'm just going to let the text speak, and then we're going to pray. Look at verse 9. This is what the preacher is saying. But in all this, I laid my heart, examine it all, how the righteous and the wise and their deeds are in the hands of God. I want you, let me read that one more time. But I laid all this to heart, examine it all, and you need to read the pretext. We don't have time to go into that how that the righteous and the wise and their actions or their deeds are all in the hands of God. Whether it is to love or to hate, man does not know. Both are before him. So here, here's what that says. My life is in God's hand. I don't know tomorrow what tomorrow holds for me. Only God knows that. I can plan. I can prepare. I can do all of that stuff. But it is only God who knows what that is, right? And, and here, here, here's how James puts it in James chapter 4 when he was speaking to the wise and, and the foolish rich people that would just simply say, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go here. I'm going to sell. I'm going to trade. I'm going to buy. I'm going to do all this stuff. Here's what James says. Should we not take a moment to pause and say, if the Lord wills? Talk to me, y'all. God is in Control. I have one remaining aunt um, on my side of the family. And my aunt lives in the Caribbean in St. Lucia, and she's 85 years old. And every time I call her, I'll say to her, Auntie, I'll call you um, next month or next week. Or we'll come and see you. And here's her response, and she's been doing this for years. She'll say to Katania and I, well, baby, if the Lord wills. That's what she says. I mean, she says that faithfully. And, and sometimes I want to say, auntie, don't say that. You ain't going nowhere, right? And she says, baby, if the Lord wills, because she understands that her life is in the hand of the Lord, right? Look at verse 2. 
It says, first, let me look at the next thing I want you to get, right? We're all subject to that. Here, here's what Paul said. I mean, um, the, the writer of, of Ecclesiastes, here's what he says. It is the same for all since the same event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good and the evil, to the clean and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and him who does not sacrifice. As the good one um, is so is the sinner, and he who swears, as is he who shuns oath. Look at it. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, and that the same event happens to all. It says, also the hearts of the children of men are full of evil, and madness is in their hearts while they live. And after that, it says they go to the dead. Here's what that said. It doesn't matter whether you're sinning or whether you're not sinning. It doesn't matter whether you're fasting or whether you're not fasting. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or whether you're not a Christian. It doesn't matter whether you're Muslim or a Buddhist or whatever faith you may have. What the author is saying, everybody's going to die. Everybody's going to die. And we don't want to hear that while we're alive because the focus is life. You kind of get where I'm going? We don't want to hear that. But I want, to, you, want you to hear me say this morning, it's, it's going to happen, right? The scripture puts it this way. It is appointed unto man once to die. And then after this, what? The judgment. It's coming. Very, very important. So, so and, and if I have my thing, here's what he says. We all prefer life over death, right, if we have our way. So, so look at what it says. Um, where is that? In verse 4. But he who is joined with the living has hope for a living dog is better than a dead lion. I just love that analogy. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter how much you have or how strong you may be, right? Once death happens, it doesn't matter anymore. Life is ended. Come on. Life is ended. It doesn't matter anymore. Look at verse 5. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. My goodness. For their love and their hate and their envy have already perished, and forever they have no more share in all that is done under the sun. Hear me, people. When we leave this earth, it's over. From an earthly perspective. From an earthly perspective, it is over. So, so listen to this. I can be as vain as I want to be right now. When I die, given time, no one will remember. And it won't matter. I can be as rich as I want right now. When I die, can't take it with me. Are you with me? And it's over. I've heard, I've heard illustrations. You've never seen a hearse following a funeral car. I mean, a, a, I'm sorry, a, a U-Haul filled with your riches following a hearse, right? Because you can't take it with you. It'll all be left behind. Very, very important that we might miss that. And so because of all that, this is the thing I want you to hear me say. We don't know the day nor the hour. And we forget that. Come on. Because we are enjoying life so much and because life is so rich, we forget that and we don't know the day nor the hour. Can you see that? Look, jump down, jump down to verse 11. Jump down to verse 11. Look at what verse 11 said. Again, I saw that under the sun, the race is nor to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise. It says what? Nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor to those with knowledge, but time and chance happen to them all. Look at verse 12. For man does not know his time. And these crazy illustrations, like fish that are taken in an evil net, and like birds that are caught in a snare, so the children of men are snared at an evil time when it suddenly falls upon them. These illustrations are blowing me away. Let me tell you why. I scuba dive 
And sometimes when I'm down there scuba diving, I watch the dive leader with a spear gun, and a fish will be doing its business, and they'll take the gun out, bam, take the fish away. That fish, when it began its day, had no idea. Come on, y'all. Had no idea. He had all intention on swimming all morning long with no expectation that his life was going to be ended in such a manner, right? Then, then notice what it says. Um, the bird that's flying. You guys don't do this here. But, but in islands, we have these things called slingshots. <laughs> y'all don't do that here because y'all will go to jail. Amen. You will. You can't touch a dog here. And here's what will happen. Amen. I know I'm telling the truth. We go out, birds will fly, and we kids, you'd be like, watch me take that one out the sky. In my slingshot, bam, take it out. And, of course, we cook it and eat it. But we'll take it out the sky. That bird, that bird had no idea. No idea that that was going to happen. Right? And so here's what the author is saying to me, and here's what he's saying to you. We have no idea that God has a slingshot pointing at you. And you don't know when he's going to release the stone. We have no idea. Just like the bird and just like the fish, we're living life happy-go-lucky. Not thinking about tomorrow. Not thinking about anything that's going to happen, right? So then, here, here's the second thing, and then we'll stop. So because we don't know, we should make the best of this life <laughs> by living in a manner that's pleasing to God. That's what I want you to hear this morning. We should make the best of this life. We've been talking on Wednesday about making a decision to be different, making a decision to change, making a decision. You kind of get what I'm saying. Make the best of this life. Don't make the mistake of saying, tomorrow I'm going to change. Don't make the mistake of saying, three years from now I'm going to change. Don't make the mistake of saying, four years from now I'm going to change. I say this all the time and and maybe it'll make sense right now. Whenever we make those kinds of statements, we are gambling with funds that are not in our bank account. You kind of get what I'm saying? We try to make a withdrawal, the check's going to bounce every single time. Let's read these texts and then we're going to pray. So notice what it says here in verse 7. Go eat. So while you're alive, this is life. This is what, how we live life that's pleasing to God. So go eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart for God has already approved what you do. I like that, right? Let your garments be always white and let not oil be lacking. It says this, enjoy life with the wife whom you love all the days of your, I watch this, vain life for that he has given you under the sun because that is your portion in life and your toil at what, and it says, and in your toil, at which you toil under the sun, whatever your hands find to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol or the grave to which you're going. Verse 7, man, enjoy life. Eat, drink, be merry, right? For God has already approved it. So enjoy it. Enjoy it. This is what it's saying. Enjoy it while you can. But let me add this. Enjoy it in a godly manner. Come on, hear me this morning. Enjoy it in a godly manner. Don't, don't, don't live this sheltered, crazy life. Don't, don't do that. I like that. And he says, he says, let your garments always be white. Don't miss this. That's a metaphor for while you are enjoying life, live life in a clean way. Don't dirty your garment. Don't soil your soul. Come on, hear me this morning. Don't mess it up. Stay pure that while you are enjoying it, God is saying, that's what I'm talking about. Let not oil be lacking in your head. In other words, I, I, let me give you this. Keep your car filled with gas. Don't run out. I think y'all going to get that. 
And Pastor K, I think they wrote verse 9 for me. It says, enjoy life with your wife whom you love. All the days of your vain life that he's given you under the sun, girl, I ain't treat you good enough yet. Y'all just need to stop right now, amen? Because <laughs> y'all starting something, amen? I need to love you more, amen? I need, I need to love you better. I need to, you kind of get where I'm going? I'm being serious right now. I, I got to be Mr. Romance, amen? When, when you watching BT and you see all that romantic stuff, that ought to be me, girl. I, I, I should be your knight in shining armor, Amen. I should be, yeah, yeah, I know I'm making you blush right now, but this is what the text says, right? That's what the text says. Come on, y'all. It says, enjoy, wait, wait, you ought to walk around with a grin from here to here because of what your man doing for you. Are you with me? That's what the text says. Come on, talk to me. Enjoy life. Enjoy life. That's what it says. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love all your days. And then it says, work hard, right? Work hard. So, so I like that because what it says to me is that I shouldn't come home telling you that we don't have. Because I don't ever remember God saying to you, I can't provide for you. I don't ever remember God saying, come on, talk to me. Come on, because he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So if I'm going to be a good husband, looks like I need to own some stuff. Are oh, y'all not hearing me this morning, Right? And I ought to do it with fervor and do it with strength while I am still alive. While I'm still alive. Whatever my hands is put to do, verse 10 says, do it hard so that God could get the glory. Why? Because we don't know, right? We don't, we don't know. Verse D there, no one knows the day nor the hour of our departure. So, before I go to that last thing, so work as hard as you can. So listen to it. I'm pretty sure when Kobe was in that helicopter with his daughter and the other family members that were in the helicopter with him, I wasn't there and I'm isogeting right now, but I'm pretty sure in the helicopter, if I'm there, the conversations were probably something like this. Hey, Gianna, when you get to the game, I want you to give your best. I want you to perform well, right? Daddy's there with you. Daddy's in the corner. And I'm going to make sure you do well. You kind of get, and, and if um, Gianna, she's probably thinking, okay, I'm going to do good. Then she's probably, you know, because daddy had a whole lot of money, right? Hey, dad, if I score X number of points, are you going to get me that new Porsche? You know, or you kind of get what I'm saying? I mean, her conversation wasn't that of a normal kid. Let's just be honest. You kind of get what I'm saying? So, so the dialogue in that plane, because most of us, when we got to go to a game, we're either catching the bus, or we're driving, or we hope we're having enough gas to get the kids there on time. Come on, y'all. Or we're fussing. Here's this family and families in a helicopter <laughs> going to a game. And, and, and here's the thing. That was their norm. It wasn't like that was the first time they were doing that. He would fly the Staples Centers that way. He would do his thing. He, I can guarantee you this. I can guarantee you this. The conversation in that helicopter was not, hey, what's going to happen when we crash? I can guarantee you that wasn't a conversation. Because they had no anticipation that God would release the stone from the slingshot and take them out the sky. Had no expectation. Right? So here's the last thing. Now, forgot the W. If you haven't done it already, get right with God. Because tomorrow is not promised. Corinthians puts it this way. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Love Kobe, mourning, all that stuff. I get it, I get it, I get it. But what God reminded me, here's what all the newscasters are saying. But he was just 41. That's what they're saying. His time wasn't yet. He had life ahead of him. Says who? Says who? Says who? 
my prayer life, my devotional life, says who? Says who? So here's the challenge this morning for all of us, right, as we prepare to come to the table. Make the best of this life. Don't let the enemy fool you into thinking tomorrow is yours. Don't let the enemy fool you into thinking time is your best friend. Don't cause that to happen. So here's what I want to do this morning. If you're here, and man, maybe you haven't said yes to God and said, God, I want to accept you into my life as personal Lord and Savior, I don't give you a chance to do that because it begins there. The author talks about Sheol being the grave, but Sheol has another meaning, right? Hades, it could be hell, meaning eternal separation from God in that place where the worm doesn't die and the fire is not clear. I, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I want to be with Jesus. And by virtue of the fact that you are here this morning, it says to me that you believe heaven is real and you believe hell is real. That's why you're here. You believe that. And so listen, church, if you hadn't said yes Now's the time. Get it? That's how getting right begins. That's how it begins. That's how it begins. And the other part of that is that if there's things in your life that you know is not pleasing to God, pleasing to your husband, pleasing to your family members, pleasing to your spouse, man, what a time to get it right. What a time to turn it around. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. So I want to invite you just to join me in prayer this morning. And I'm going to invite our ministry team to come and just come and we're going to take a moment to do this. Worship team, come. We're going to take a moment. We'll get out in time.